Good day, I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. So today I would like to talk about how long to make your test or uh, how long to give your students in order to take that test. So when you're doing this, obviously you're, you're, you're creating an exam uh, that's going to be part of your core assessment for the course. It's pretty standard for most college courses to use tests as a kind of a core assessment. And either you have the amount of time you're going to give the students because it's going to be a time test or you know, your class period is 90 minutes long or whatever it happens to be. And well, that's how much time you have. <laughs> how fast can you get the, to the students? How fast can they get started? Whatever is left in your class period, that's how long they have to take the test because, you know, the next class will be coming in. Uh, so in both cases, you know, how long do you set or how much test do you give to fit your time? You want to have some general ideas. Now, you can look up online. There's generally some rules of thumb. Um, some places are nice. They have all kinds of tables. And you'll see for, say, multiple choice questions uh, between 30 and 90 seconds per question as a general rule of thumb. That's a spread because we're talking very general heuristics here. We're not talking, uh, really diving deep into a particular test question because, you know, your multiple choice question and my multiple choice questions are going to be different. Your question three and your question seven are going to be different. They're not the same question. So the only way to know, do you need to give the student 30 seconds or, you know, 120 seconds is to actually give it to the students and try it out. And of course, by that point, you've already given the test. So it's kind of, well, we're already there. Um, now, you've got a couple of approaches uh, that you can take from here. One, you can kind of ballpark it with some of the heuristics. Uh, go for a little shorter is a little better than a little longer. Uh, also, you can take the test yourself and then take however long it took your test and multiply it by, say, a factor of four for how long the student should be able to take the test. What you will find, especially if you're you know, not used to giving students assessments, is that when students are doing activities, whether it be assessments or labs, etc., the amount of time it takes them is quite often surprisingly long. So multiplying by a factor of four may sound obsessive, but it's actually maybe not enough. You may want to almost multiply by a factor of five at times. So that can get you kind of a, a ballpark of how long it's going to take. But you're not going to actually know until you actually give the test. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the fact of life. Uh, so don't feel bad. You know, if you have a miscalibrated test, that happens. That happens to all of us. Sometimes I'll give a test and boom, they're done in 20 minutes. And I was planning on taking an hour and a half or two hours. Like, well, that didn't work. Other times they don't actually finish. Um, that's worse. Everyone feels bad when that happens. Uh, they like it when it's the former and you just like, Ugh, well, that's not going to be a great test. Uh, so you're going to have some, some damage control to do if you accidentally make it too long. Okay, so when it comes to students turning in tests, what you'll notice is traditionally, like right off the front, you might get one or two students, especially in a larger class, that just turn it in. Like, how could you do it so fast? I couldn't do that test anywhere near as fast as they did. You look at the test and it's blank. They gave up. They're like, I, I know I don't know this. I'm not even going to try. I can't. And that happens. I always feel bad for those students. Um, it's got to be incredibly disheartening. And of course, it's not going to help their grade. Hopefully, you've got like a drop test policy. And so like at least it's not going to, you know, flounder them. They just burned one of their drops or burned their one drop. Uh, then what you'll notice is the students will all be diligently working. You can kind of keep an eye on them. Quite often, you'll get a few students who are like, they're done. They're not really checking their test. They're just kind of sitting there. And what they're doing is they don't want to be the first person to turn in the test. So then someone will finally turn in their test, uh, in which case they will turn in their test. Uh, so you get this small little clump, uh, definitely kind of a, a non-Gaussian distribution there. But that it, it really, they were done beforehand. They just didn't turn it in. And then you'll start getting this kind of nice trickle coming in. And it will really feel like a kind of a Gaussian curve. Uh, where, you know, it trickles more and more and more and then starts petering off as the majority of the students have already turned their test. And eventually those stragglers will start turning it in and, and you know, the last couple stragglers are like, would you please get it done? Ideally, you don't have to call time. Ideally, you don't have to say, okay, we're out of time. You got to stop, hand them in. You don't want to do that. 
because you don't want to be assessing for speed. Uh, usually you don't want to be assessing for speed. There, there are classes where you do need to assess for speed. So, for instance, maybe if you're teaching paramedics and you're doing something where, you know, the person is dying while they're doing the math. They need to do the math faster. Um, that's not the class I teach. I don't teach that class. I don't teach anything remotely like that class. Uh, so for my class, and for most classes out there, speed, you know, can they do it in five minutes or 15? It doesn't matter. Can they do it or can they not? Uh, and this gets into an idea called universal design. And the idea of universal design is that when you're designing things, whether it be tests or um, sidewalks, etc., you want to design them in a way that everyone can use them as is without modification. Accommodations for disability shouldn't actually be needed because they should be already baked into it. This is why we get curb cuts all over the place. Additionally, the accommodations for a small minority of individuals may actually pay dividends to the majority. Most people don't need a curb cut, but will occasionally find them incredibly useful. You know, if you're dragging around a cart or something, you may be able to walk fine, but boy, that curb cut was nice. The same goes for designing tests. If speed is not a primary learning objective, or at least not a, a significant learning objective, then most people will benefit from not being rushed. And those who do have some form of learning disability or other speed impairment will need that extended time. Now, those students who are disabled will probably ha already have some form of accommodation where they get, you know, time and a half or double time. Uh, but this way, you've got it baked in. And this creates a nice, uniform, clean playing field, and you are testing what you want to test on. Uh, I myself am dyslexic. I had double time on all of my exams in college, and I used it precisely once. Uh, it wasn't needed because the other exams I was taking, those professors had you know, dealt with a universal design philosophy. They made the test so that everyone could finish it in a reasonably long period of time. The one time I did use it, the guy was young. I'm pretty sure this was the first class he was teaching. It was calculus. And he had made his first test, only four questions long, and it was horribly hard. Um, I had used like my full double time. Uh, I was in the testing center. I come back to class the next day, and I learned that half the class was in tears. Um, he had some damage control to do. That happens, but the other tests weren't so long. He had learned from that. And so if you make a spectacular mistake, you'll learn from it. Um, it's been 20 years, I don't remember the guy's name, but presumably his tests are now well calibrated and that has probably not happened since. When you're thinking of tests, you wanna start looking at timing and get that in line with this idea of universal design try and get it so that all of your students are turning it in. I like to shoot for maybe the median being around two thirds of the way into the test. So, you know, if I've got a 60 minutes window to take the test, I want most students, the, you know, the average turning it in around the 40 minute mark. I start getting students turning it in maybe 20, 25 minutes, and then my last few are turning it in, you know, in the 50 some odd minute mark but most students are done, and I'd rather be a little bit short and students get it in with plenty of time to spare than the opposite. Now, there is one other elephant in the room, and that is online exams. Online tests have a problem. You don't have a proctored environment. There are online proctors where, you know, a person stares at you through webcam. Those are problematic, and those are very intrusive. If I was taking an online class and that was going to be the case, I would not be cool with that. And I really can't blame my students for not being okay with that. But the consequence then is that every test is open note, open web, open person sitting next to you. There's not much we can do with the person sitting next to you. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be just, we're going to call that cheating and hopefully the students have some degree of honor. Some do, some don't. But when it comes to open web, open book, one approach is to restrict the time fairly heavily so that, hey, you only have 30 seconds to answer this question, so you either know it or you don't. You don't have time to go Googling the answer. You might be able to flip to your notes real quick and check, but you don't have time. 
I do not like this. I have done it when, you know, COVID hit and I had to, you know, go online in 2020 and even through 2021 when we're doing hybrids. Well, I had to do that and I did not like it because it violates universal design. Timing is really strict because you're trying to hit a much narrower window and you get a lot of negative feedback if you hit that window a little too tight. Uh, so what you want to do is if you don't have to do that, I would not recommend it. I do not like that. Uh, typically I will take other approaches and say, you know what, have an essay test. This is going to take me a lot longer to grade, but I can give students a much more reasonable amount of time. It's going to be timed. I'm not going to give them forever. Uh, you know, instead of trying to do 30 seconds per multiple choice question, I might give them 15 minutes per, you know, typed out answer and then I'll Google the answer that they gave me and see if I see that popping up on the internet. And if I do, someone's getting in trouble. Um, that's an approach I like a lot better. I don't like trying to restrict the time in order to combat um, students looking up answers. I would say cheating, except for you might as well just say that you can. it's an open book, open internet test anyhow. You know good and well everyone's going to do it anyhow, so no reason making a rule. There is no way you're going to enforce. Okay, so with all of that said, uh, hopefully that gives you a few thoughts to think about. I will see you in later videos and have a wonderful day.